are gonna be there as well. Uh, so today, you guys, if you wanna take a look at the chat, we're gonna be starting off with a nine minute EMOM. So if you remember last week, we did wrist push-ups. They are back again this week. So go ahead and make sure you have a towel and a yoga mat. We'll grab that after we talk about this, right? So um, our nine minute EMOM, we're gonna start off with a 40 second single arm reverse plank bridge, warming up the shoulder. Uh, and then minute two is gonna be three pike weight shift. So we've done these before. I might've called it something else. You're gonna be in a pike, keeping your arms straight and you're going to have your shoulders shift over your wrists while you're in that pike position. And then you're gonna drop back down to your heels. Uh, and then you're gonna do 20 shoulder taps, right? So we're doing three pike weight shift into 20 shoulder taps. And then minute three will be five to seven candlesticks or 15 hollow rocks. So we're doing that for nine minutes. And then this is where we are going to begin our strength. So uh, it's gonna be super set. That's how it's written as usual. So A1 is gonna be our wrist push up. We're gonna do four to six reps, a little bit more than we did last week, wherever we were at with that. And then uh, movement number two is going to be reverse plank leg raise. So we're gonna be in a reverse plank and we're gonna try to keep our legs straight as we reach it up towards the ceiling. It won't be very high, just to bring it up to about shoulder height. Uh, alternating six reps. We're gonna do that for four sets. And then second set of movements we have is going to be a front support chair walk. Uh, we're gonna do 10 reps. And then we have four uh, shrimp squat on each leg. If we can't do shrimp squat, you're gonna be doing a curtsy squat for four sets. And then last set of exercises is going to be a 45 degree handstand, 45 degree handstand on the wall doing shoulder taps, uh, 12 to 16 reps. If we can't do the shoulder taps from that position, you're just gonna keep your arms straight and then move your hands up and down. I'll be sure to show you everything I'm talking about. And then uh, you're gonna superset that with a 45 degree peeler off the wall. So we're gonna be leaning against the wall at a 45 degree angle. And we're gonna think of pressing our hands, back of the hands into the floor as we raise ourselves off the wall. You're probably like, what? I'll show you. Uh, we're gonna do that for four sets, all right? Uh, off the top of your head. Oh yeah, you made it back, Emma. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to send the workout again. I just went over it right now. But now we're gonna go ahead and get started on our warm up, okay? So you guys go ahead and grab a towel and your yoga mat because we have our wrist push ups we're doing today. So make sure you have that nearby a towel and your yoga mat. All right, squad, cool. So we're gonna just have that nearby because we're gonna use it soon. So let's go ahead and sit on the ground and we're gonna begin with some wrist stretches and then we're gonna go into cat-cow. Main thing is we just wanna mobilize because a lot of the time we're just time under tension with gymnastics. So we just wanna feel loose and that we can get into the positions we need to be in. So from here, let's go ahead and start with hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. What's up, Stefano? I'm gonna go ahead and send the workout one more time through to you so you can just reference it. All right, so now we're on all four. We're gonna think of having hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. I want you guys to think of making circles with your shoulders, going around your wrists, pressing your hands into the floor like you're pressing down on a gas pedal. And now I want you guys to go ahead and switch directions. Good, and then from here, we're gonna go ahead and turn the wrists over. You can do one at a time, or you can do two at a time, and we're gonna think of just rocking back and forward. Keeping the arms straight. And now we're gonna turn them over again. Awesome work, you guys. From here, we're gonna have our palms facing in, side to side.
All right, and here we're gonna go ahead and loosen up our shoulders. We're gonna go ahead and take a seat on our heels. I'll have to raise my camera up, of course, one second. Yeah, so we're sitting on our heels or our butt. From here, we're gonna think of, uh, we're gonna do some shoulder cars. Most of you are pretty familiar with these in my class. So we're gonna think of keeping the shoulder back. We're gonna extend that arm, that right arm. Think of having a thumb up towards the ceiling. We're gonna stay absolutely still as we look forward. I'm gonna raise that thumb up. I'm gonna bring that arm as far back as I can and I can no longer push it back. I'm going to begin to externally rotate my palm and I'm gonna keep rotating, 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 getting into this position, keeping my chest up, eyes forward, and then I'm gonna go backwards, right? I'm gonna push that thumb back and I can no longer push the thumb back. I'm going to begin to unwind my arm while staying absolutely still, absolutely still facing forward, right? You're gonna go ahead and give me five on your right side and then five on your left side. So think of staying absolutely still and we only want to move the arm around, mobilizing the shoulder. You guys, five on left, five on right. Awesome work. When you're done, the next thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to do our prone swimmers lying face down. We've done these before in my class as well. Most of you are pretty familiar with these. So we're going to think of lying on our belly. We're going to have our hands behind the head, keeping the shoulders and the elbows back. From here, I'm going to reach up into a Y, keeping the fingertips up towards the ceilings, keeping the shoulder blades back. I'm going to rotate the thumbs down towards the floor. Now the palms are facing up towards the ceiling. I'm going to bring the hands behind the back. Ooh keeping the shoulders and the elbows back. And then from here, I'm gonna reach back up into that Y, rotate the thumbs back down towards the floor, bringing the hands behind the head, right? You're gonna go ahead and give me seven of these. Try not to rush through them, slow and controlled, really working those end ranges. So once you lock your arm out right and you're rotating your thumb back down towards the floor, really pay attention to how that feels, trying to keep those shoulders and those elbows back as much as possible. Seven full swimmers for me. Nice work, you guys. When you're done, you can stand up. I'm always trying like a different camera angle or set my thing up on something different. It never ever really works out well. Head's always cut off. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is hollow body inchworms, right? So you're gonna think of your typical inchworm, but we're gonna walk our hands out a little bit further, so watch me real quick, right? So I'm gonna walk my hands out small steps. Normally I'd stop here, and I'm gonna go out a little bit further. Think hollow position, three, two, one, then you're gonna walk your hands back to your feet, back into your pipe, and then you're gonna go back out. Ideally, I would've walked a little bit further, but I'm in socks and I'm on tiles, so you would've seen me face wet. So think of your hollow position, you guys. You're gonna go ahead and give me five hollow body inchworms with a three second pause. So try to stay tight. Think of your hollow position, head through the arms, squeezing the legs together, being on those toes. 
Good, Liz, yeah. Go ahead and give me five reps. Nice, Michelle. Good job, Rand. Okay, squad. Nice work. So next thing we're going to move on to is we're going to get ready to do our EMOM. So I'm going to go over the movements that we have in the EMOM. Um, uh, some of these we've done in my class the last week. I can't remember if we did them all in gymnastics. So we're going to be starting with, uh, I'm going to show you the single arm reverse plank bridge. So from here, I'm going to be in a uh, bear stance plank, right? I'm going to have my knees off the floor. So my knees are off the floor. I'm going to think of rotating my hips as I reach up to the ceiling. And then I'm going to reach behind. And then I'm going to go back into that bear stance. And then I'm going to switch hands, right? So other arm, rotate the hips, reach up to the ceiling, reach behind. Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and walk through this together. Let's get on all four. So we're going to be on all four. We're going to take the knees off the floor and we're going to be only on our right arm. Knees are off the floor. Rotate the hips, right? You're gonna extend the hips as you reach behind you with that left arm. And then now we're gonna go ahead and drop the hips, rotate again. Try to keep the hips up actually, don't drop them entirely. And now you're gonna switch back to the left. And then we're gonna lift the hips, rotating to the ceiling, reaching back with that right arm, and then rotating through. That's gonna be our reverse plank bridge. Okay, do a couple more if you're feeling kind of confused. Any questions? You're supposed to keep your knees off. Like once you start to turn, keep your knees off the whole time. Yep, keep your knees off the floor and just try to keep your hips basically at the same height the entire time moving through the movement. Okay, so we're going to be doing that for 40 seconds in our EMOM. Minute two is going to be our three pike weight shift. So from here, you guys are going to be in your pike stance, right? So this is going to be like, this would be a down dog and this would be pike. We'd be a little bit higher up with our butt up higher. So from here, I'm going to think head through my arms. I'm going to try to keep my legs as straight as I can. Palms pushed into the floor. I'm going to shift my shoulders past my wrist, right? I'm on my toes. From here, getting my shoulders past my wrist. I'm going to hold that for a second, and then I'm going to drop my hips back again. So from here, keeping the arms straight. Shoulders are going to pass the wrist. I'm on my toes, pressing into the ground. Hold that for a second, and then drop back. Right, go ahead and feel that out for a couple uh, for a couple reps. See how that feels on your wrist. I know if I continue to do this with sweaty hands, it might be dangerous. So keep that in mind wherever you're at. You want to try to get those wrists. I'm sorry, the shoulders past the wrists as you're leaning forward. Good. And then so you're going to be doing three pike weight shifts, and then after that you're immediately going into 20 shoulder taps. But you would go back to your bear stance. So from here, you guys, you would be in your bear stance with your knees off the floor. Sorry, this is a quadruped stance. And you, then you're going to go into 20 shoulders taps, trying to keep your hips as stable as possible. So that's going to be in the EBOM. Okay? And then minute three is going to be five to seven candlesticks or 15 hollow rocks. So we've had these in my class before. So for your candlestick, right, I'm going to think of rolling back onto the floor. I'm going to have my hands behind my head. Excuse me, I have to burp. And I'm gonna press my hands into the ground as I think of rolling forward, creating momentum. I'm gonna show you real quick. So from here, standing tall. Right, so I'm gonna roll into my back, press my hands into the floor as I stand up rolling forward. Go ahead and give me two of those right now. See how those are for you, okay? We wanna think of pressing the hands, back of the hands into the ground as we roll back onto the floor. If we struggle with those, your alternative is going to be 15 to 20 hollow rocks. Nice, Emma. Good job, you guys. Think of keeping those toes in the air. Awesome. All right, so we've warmed up all the movements of our EMOM. Now is the time to begin the EMOM. I'll be reminding you what movement is what, uh, but you guys have all seen them so far. Any questions before we get started? 
Okay. One second, we'll get started in about 30 seconds. Okay, 10 seconds, we're starting with our single arm reverse plank bridge. So you're gonna be on your single arm, you're gonna rotate your hips, I'll show you a couple more. Three, two, one, here we go, we're in our bear stance. I'm gonna rotate through, lift the hips up, reach back behind me, right, and then switch my hands, keeping my hips up. Good job, you guys, 30 seconds. I was wrong, 20 seconds. Keep going, nice Michelle. Good job squad, 10 seconds. Three, two, one, and rest. Good, next up is our pike weight shift. So you're gonna be in your bear stance. Sorry, not bear stance, pike stance. Five, four, three, two, one. So we're in our pike stance, and we're gonna think of keeping our arms straight as our shoulders go past our wrists on our toes, and then we're gonna drop our hips back. We're gonna do three of these. And then we're gonna to go to our quadruped bear stance, right knees off the floor for 20 shoulder taps. Nice work squad. Try to pretend you have a glass of wine on your back and you don't want that glass of wine to fall. 20 seconds. Next up, we have our candlesticks, five to seven. If these are becoming easier for you, you can think of coming up on one leg. You'll be coming up out of a pistol, all right? Three, two, one, here we go. If we don't have candlesticks, 15 to 20 hollow rocks. Good job, you guys. Stefano, try to keep your toes up to the sky rather than going over towards your head. See if you can keep them up higher. So like instead of coming back like this, come back like keeping your toes up like this. So when you put your arms back, press your hands into the floor and reach your toes up. There you go. Good. Nice, I'm sure your back likes that better. <laughs> All right, you guys, you have 15 seconds and we're going back to our single arm reverse plank bridge for 40 seconds. So on this one, I should have been more direct about just keep your hips up the whole time you're rotating through. So when I'm here, keeping the hips up as I go through, trying not to drop them. Three, two, one, here we go, 40 seconds. Awesome, you guys. Ooh, ooh. Losing our balance there, looking good, 30 seconds. Nice, Liz. Good job, Jamie. 15 seconds. Three, two, one, and rest. All right, next we have our three, three pike weight shift and our 20 shoulder taps. And five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Pike weight shift. Getting those shoulders past those wrists. Nice, Jamie. Good job, Sarah. Good job, squad. If you're feeling more comfortable with that position, walk those feet a little closer to the hand. See if you're getting stronger as you have those shoulders creep past the wrists.
30 seconds. Ten seconds, and we have our five to seven candlestick. Three, two, one. Here we go. Nice, Sarah. Nice, Emma. Good job, you guys, getting those toes up to the ceiling. Liz. Think more instead of this, think toes up to the ceiling. There you go, good. Awesome, you guys, we have about 20 seconds and we're going back to our single arm reverse plank bridge. It's gonna be our last one. 10 seconds. Three, two, one, here we go. Keep those hips up. All right, good job. Nice work, Polanski family, looking good. 20 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. 15 seconds and we have our three pike weight shift plus 20 shoulder taps, last one. Three, two, one. Here we go, squad. Pike weight shift. Try to see if you can keep the if you can keep the legs as straight as possible. Hips up high. Nice, Rand. Good job, Michelle. Nice, Liz. Good job, Emma. Twenty five seconds left of this minute. Ten seconds, and then we have our candlestick. That's going to be our last one. Three, Three two, one. one. Here we go. Five to seven candlestick. Nice, Sarah. Looking good, you guys. Nice, Jamie. All right, good job, everybody. Okay, so we did our wrist push-ups last week and we have those again. So yeah, Stefano, I don't know if you were in class last week, we had the wrist push-ups. So I was telling everybody to grab a towel again, or if you're able to oops, stack your uh, mat enough to make cushion for your wrists, All right? So we're gonna go through that again, you guys. So I'm gonna show you how to set up your towel, you forgot. Uh, basically, we just wanna create like a pretty good cushion. So from here, I'm just gonna fold my towel over. And then I'm gonna have my mat on top of it, right? And then so from there, I'm gonna have my wrist just like this. 
And as I'm going in, my elbows are gonna be slightly out to the side, but they're not gonna be up like this. They're still gonna be kind of angled down towards my heels, right? And then basically your, finger, the, your fingers are gonna to touch your chest, right? And then so our options are Stanley, you're gonna be on our knees, right? So when we're on our knees, we wanna make sure those hips are facing forward instead of being back like this and going in this angle, this direction. So we wanna make sure hips travel down towards the floor and then you press back out, right? So if I'm gonna be on my toes, I really want to think of squeezing my butt and my abs as I drop down and then press back out. All right, so I want you guys to go ahead and maybe warm up with a set on your knees if you're feeling kind of fragile right now with your wrists, and then maybe we'll move into knees off the floor, All right? Or maybe you're going to stay on your knees. So I want you to go ahead and give me four to six reps. So Liz, let's make sure those hips travel down the same rate as the shoulders instead of being back here. You want them more forward. Good. Nice, you guys. All right. And then so we're going to be pairing that with our uh, reverse plank leg raise. So I'm going to be in a reverse plank. I'm going to have my hands behind me, stretching through that thoracic spine in the back, upper back, right? And then from here, I'm going to think of keeping my legs as straight as possible as I raise one leg up and then drop the other one down. I want you to give me six to 10 reps. All right, I know for myself right now, this lights up my hamstrings, so I'm not sure how it feels for you guys. So six to 10 reps total. So each time you raise one leg, that's one rep. I want you to keep the hips up the whole entire time. Do not break at the hips as you raise your leg up. Nice. So when you're done with that, you're gonna go back to your wrist push-up, right? And you're gonna go uh, to four to six reps on your wrist push-up. And then you're going to be going into your reverse plank leg raise, six to 10 reps again for three more sets. All right. Feel free to rest a couple seconds in between your sets, but ideally we just want to try to uh, move smoothly throughout each movement so you can give yourself like, you know, 10 to 15 seconds without standing around too much. Okay, here we go. Three more rounds. Good, Liz. Sarah, are you able to do them on your knees without doing hand release like that, where you're feeling the whole tension the whole entire time? There we go. But Okay, are you able to do it off your knees at all without collapsing onto the floor? Like, not yet? Okay. Good, Liz. Keeping those hips up high, squad. Thanks, Jamie. Hey, Corey, I have a question. What's up? So for the... Uh, for the push-ups, uh, if I cannot lock my arms completely, should I do it on the knees? Because I feel like I can, I can do it in terms of strength, but like I can't lock it up. It hurts. Okay, yeah. And if you can do it on the knees where you lock out, then let's do it on the knees for now. Okay. Okay? Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Awesome work, you guys. You can think of keeping uh, that chin kind of up towards the sky when you're in that reverse plank. Oh, no. Is six, Corey, is it six per leg or six per leg? Six to 10 total. Okay. Yeah, total. We're not doing that many of those. We want to just do them really well, keeping the hips up. Try to get a little bit lower for me, Liz. Nice, Jamie. Good job, you guys. Really fight to stay engaged, squeezing your butt and your abs on those wrist push-ups.
Thanks, Sarah. All right, you guys are done. Make sure you have a chair nearby you for our next set of exercises we're gonna be doing. Grab my chair. All right, you guys, looks like some of us are out of the screen, so I'll wait a second. Okay, cool. So next thing we're going to be doing is a chair, um, oh gosh, what is it called again? It is called a front support chair walk, right? So from here, uh, we're going to think, uh, I want you to start on your chair and then make sure your chair is actually pushed into something. So I'm just going to actually press this into my wall over here and give you guys a different angle. Hold on. All right, so from here, I'm going to think of having uh, my hands on top of the chair. And then I want you guys to think of slightly like rounding your pelvis to the chin, so belt buckle up to the chin. And then as my hands are here, I'm rounding through my upper back rather than being like this, right? So I'm creating tension. And then from here, I'm gonna keep my legs together, toes together, as I drop my hands to the floor, and then I'm gonna go back up. Right, so I want you guys to go ahead and give me, how many other right? I wrote 10 reps total, right? So each time you drop an arm and bring it back up, that's one rep. Just make sure each time you're alternating, you're switching on which arm is gonna be first, all right? So we're gonna be doing 10 reps. Try to think of squeezing glutes and abs, tension in that upper back. Good job, you guys. You can bend the arms here, all right? You can bend the arms as you're reaching up for the chair. Awesome, I know this one's tough. Good, Sarah. All right, thanks for our squad. Sorry, Corey, how did you count one on that? Just one time, each time you moved your head. Actually, I need to think about that again. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, let's let's do uh, sixteen. So just each time you move your arm, that's one rep. Okay, that's easier. Thank you. But I don't have sixteen next time. I know that was kind of confusing. I should have thought about that differently. Look. Cool. So we'll worry about the 16 count next time. All right, you guys. So we're going to be supersetting that with a shrimp squat. So shrimp squat involves good ankle mobility and it's a single leg movement. All right. So we can't do a shrimp squat. You're going to be doing a curtsy uh, squat. Uh, so from here, I'm going to show you with my ab mat behind me. So if you have like something soft for your knee, that's going to be ideal. Let me, gosh, this is a terrible angle here. Here we go. Maybe this will be a little bit better. <laughs> All right. So from here, this is not much better. Oh, zoom. Okay, so I'm gonna think of standing beside my ab mat. I'm gonna stand on my right leg. From here, I'm gonna think of pushing my butt back and reaching forward as my knee taps the floor, and then I'm gonna stand, right? So uh, we don't have to necessarily touch our knee all the way to the floor, like if you have a mat or something there that's helping you stop from banging your knee on the floor, then that's also ideal. Right, so I want you guys to go ahead and give me four shrimp squat on each side. If we can't do the shrimp squat, what you're going to do is you're gonna be in a standing position. I'm gonna think of wrapping my back leg around my back ankle, right? I can have my foot more on the floor for more support, or I can take it off the floor and have it pressed into my back foot to guide me as I go down on that single leg squat, 
right? So if you're not doing the typical shrimp squat I just first showed you, or on each leg, you're doing the curtsy squat with your other foot wrapped behind your ankle. Make sense? Hey, Corey. Yeah. Um, so the goal is to get all the way down to the mat. And if you don't go to the mat, then you do the, I mean, if, like I'm touching it. I'm just not like, I don't, like, I don't know if you want to put weight on it or is it just Let me, you want to try to keep your heel down, right? Okay. We want to just touch that knee to the floor. Another scaling option would be to do just keep your leg like this. Like I see some people are doing, right? And I would just tap my whole foot and then come down rather than the knee first. So that's an option as well. But I'm pretty sure you can do these lists. You have pistols. Okay. So we'll just keep looking. Show me a different angle. Walk back a little bit more. So when you guys are done, you're gonna go back to your front support chair walk. You're gonna do 16 reps. Each time you move one arm, that is one rep. And then you're gonna go back into your shrimp squat, four on each leg. Yeah, Liz, good. That looks better. We're doing four sets. And you want to be far away from the chair in the first one, right? Uh, for the first one, yeah. You want to think of like being in a hollow position. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. Good. Yep. Nice photo. Good, Sarah. Nice, Jamie. You guys have great ankle mobility. I love it. Good job, squad. Think of squeezing those abs as you're going into your shrimp squat. That's going to help you. Abs and glutes. Nice, Emma. How many of the shrimp spots? Four each leg. Nice, Stefano. Those look really good. Nice, Liz. The super advanced shrimp squat would be holding your back leg as your knee goes to the floor too, just to let you guys know. I can't demo that, I'm sorry, I don't have great ankles. <laughs> Oh yeah, Liz is gonna try it. If you do it on my one foot. Yeah, just basically, yeah, good. You're basically thinking of dropping that knee straight down towards that ankle, right, of the foot that you're standing on. Yeah. Nice, Sarah, good job, you guys. Yeah, so it's really about having enough ankle flexion so that you can get down to the bottom of that squat without collapsing.
not squat, lunge would be the correct term. Awesome. So when you guys are done with this, go ahead and just hang out. And then we're next going to be moving towards a wall. So if you aren't near a wall, go ahead and get yourself situated by one. Nice, Liz. It was three more sets, right, Corey? Yeah. Okay. All right, you guys. Cool. Looks like everyone is just about done. Awesome. So we're going to go over our last set of exercises. So we're going to be doing a 45 degree handstand uh, shoulder tap sequence. So you're going to do 12 to 16. Every time I talk, I'm getting heartburns from drinking coffee. And now I'm about to go upside down. All right, we're going to do 12 to 16 shoulder taps. So for your uh, degree, your angle on your handstand, you guys, I want you to like get comfortable in an angle that's challenging, but you don't feel like you're going to slip off the wall. All right. So for example, I'm going to give you a different angle with my laptop. So from here, where's my wall? Okay. Watch me as I get on the wall. So from here, I would go forward to be more at an angle, right? And I would stay here in this position as I would go for my shoulder taps, right? If, hope you guys can see my hands. If um, I can't do shoulder taps, I'm gonna think of just lifting up my arms, but staying at this angle, right? Were you guys able, oh, you guys couldn't even see my hands figures. So, but you have an idea of what to do, right? So let me show you one more time if you're not sure. All right, I don't mind. So from here, right, I'm at my ankle. Can you even see my hands? Yeah, slightly. All right, so I'm going to be doing my shoulder taps from here, or just picking my hands up and putting them down. All right, so you're going to do 12 to 16 reps, right, of either shoulder taps or picking your hands up and then putting them down. Get it at an angle that is comfortable for you, right? If uh, being far from the wall is too challenging, walk a little bit closer to the wall if needed. All right, 12 to 16 reps. So your first set. Good job, you guys. Okay, now the next thing you're gonna do is called a 45 degree peeler, okay? So I want you to think of my legs, my feet are gonna be out in front of me uh, to where my hands were, all right? And I'm gonna have my upper back just pressed into the wall. Gosh, you guys can't see me that well. All right, so my upper back is pressed into the wall and my toes are out to where my hands were. From here, I'm gonna think of pressing the back of my hands into the wall as I come up at the top and then I'm gonna drop back down, right? So I'm gonna press the back of my hands into the wall as my upper back comes away from the wall, and then I'm gonna drop back down. You're gonna go ahead and give me six to eight reps. If you need to, you can be a little bit closer to the wall, right? We wanna have, think of having our feet where our hands ideally were, if, if possible.
So are they like supposed to be far away from the wall? Yeah, we want to try to be far from the wall on this one, but if we can't, it's okay. Just be, be as comfortable, be at a distance that is comfortable where you feel like you're not going to slip. Could you demo it again? Ah, of course. Like... So from here, yeah, it's okay. So I'm going to have my feet ideally where my hands were, right? And I'm going to have my upper back press into the wall. And then from here, I'm going to think of pressing my palms, my back of my hands into the wall as I press up and away. And then back, and then press up, and then back down. Make sense? Yeah, good. But try to keep your hips off the wall already. Good. Awesome, you guys. So we're doing four sets of that, of 12 to 16 shoulder taps and six to eight 45 degree peelers. And then we are done. Nice work, you guys. Keep it up. Nice, Sarah. I have this like pinched nerve that I'm getting over and like when I peel off I feel like I'm potentially triggering it. So oh you can feel it in your shoulder? Yeah like well and maybe I'm not pushing from the right source but like I feel like that's where I that's if where you start you, pushing from right? If you do it closer to the wall do you still feel it? No. Okay then work in a range where you're not going to feel it at all. Okay. Uh, folk, like uh, get used to that idea of pressing right the back of our hand and then peeling off in that motion. So just be at an angle where you're not going to feel it at all. Are you able to keep your hands in a Y above you? And think of pressing the back of the hand into the wall as you're peeling off. Okay. Yeah. Have them too wide then. Oh yeah. Yeah. We don't want to think of a Y above our head. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Good job, squad. Staying super stable on those shoulder taps. Nice work, you guys. Keep it up. Nice, Jamie.
All right, looks like everyone's pretty much done. Okay, you guys, yeah, that's it for today.